Hey everybody, welcome back. It's I, Dr. Bosky, and uh, today I thought I would just do a real quick uh, like tips and tricks. We just got to a point, and I'm just gonna jump in and show you. So notice here, I'm just letting you notice. So we have um, we have basically a sudden burst because I really wanted light rays, and we were doing the art for the level. And we've kind of have, um, the thing is, is with the level and normal light rays into the background images, um, then the light rays just continuously scroll. It's okay aesthetically, but you really want, if you can, you want um, light VFX on top to just give a little bit more eye candy, just making th sure that things can, uh, can always be changing just a little bit. So after doing a, a silly amount of investigation yesterday, um, I I started playing with the sun effects uh, or the effects object. So in sun, and so I have these light rays here. So you take a look there. But also, um, notice we have these light rays, and these are light rays are from um, my artist Dimitri as we pulled together the the uh, version of the Three Silent Forest here. And um, let me just go back into it, and you guys can see that uh, things are happening. So I'll just restart that. So you get the light rays. So I have the light rays that follow along. And then you have these light rays over on the right side. You see, like I'm pointing at the screen, they can see it. But uh, in those, you can see here, and they they uh, cruise through the world. And then I have these light rays that come back up. So full disclosure, um, with VFX, you can you can cover them up. But you know, it's the it's the best that I can do with the engine at the moment. So how did we do this? All right. Yes. Yes. Okay. So this is how we did it. Uh, I'll go into perspective camera. So uh, here you have uh, you have an effects object, and uh, this effects object is is what we just talked about. I set um, did it work a little bit? Is that there? Ah, yeah. Okay, great. Uh, is that right? Uh, hang on. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I think that's just a that's temporary. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. The way we did the sun is we have uh, an effects object and I basically just, the, if I move it any further to the left, uh, if it's off screen, so this is your camera, right? The blue line is what the camera's actually seeing. Um, and uh, so basically, yeah, I took the effects object. Um, I actually don't need a light on this either, I don't think so. Um, and then uh, I set the, I checked glow and then I set it to star and then I set the scale to something really large. So, um, and you can see here, right? If uh, I do this, boop, it's huge, right? Like that's way, but what I really wanted is I wanted to get the, the rays because here you get these neat like uh, sunburst rays, right? So, and then I basically just set the object to, uh, to blink. That was the other thing. It's probably why I had it set there. Um, I should be fine. Yeah, maybe that's why I had it checked. I think it's still blinking. Yeah, okay, it's, it's blinking either, either way. Let me save it and check again. Sometimes things get a little silly in the engine. So, yeah, okay, cool. And then uh, what I wound up doing is I just took a, a dummy a dummy object, and then uh, it's just an enemy type. And then what I did is in the wave setting, you can choose to attach it to camera. So all this means is that um, it will stay attached to the camera as the camera moves through the world, as opposed to moving through the world as the camera progresses uh through the the world if that makes sense so uh, for instance if so you can see here oh, let me get rid of this do, 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 do. all right so yeah so and that's uh that's it so i basically get a, f a few extra sun rays that come in through here and then the way we set up these other light rays as you can see here so we have these are the the ones that are that go through the world and they're there to be a little more subtle so thank you, Dimitri, for these. These were really good. I, it took me a while to figure out how to get them in. So um, in order to do these, I set up a trigger. And uh, this trigger is um, is is basically, it stays activated. It, doesn't, it, can, be, it can switch. doesn't really matter in this case. Um, so it becomes active when it's viewed by the camera. So the yellow line is, uh, or the yellow box, is what the camera sees, even though it's not on screen. And then uh, this connects down to an effects object. And that effects object is the particle system. I probably could have done this as, as an enemy, but it, um, I, you know, I, I, there's a couple other ways you probably could have done that. So, but, uh, so I set up as a particle system. I uh, kept the scale as one. And then I went into the particle system editor. 
And then uh, one of the things that I found that you can really do, so I ran into an issue where um, you, you on a curve, you can't fade up and fade down. Um, you can only fade down or you can fade up. Um, and uh, if you try to fade down to black, uh, then what happens is that it leaves, um, it leaves basically, it's probably, it's probably just a bug in the way that the rendering, rendering engine works, but it, it leaves, um, can you see it from here? Uh, is it there? Is it fade? Yeah. So the fade up. Um, and so, yeah, so if I try to, to fade down it, um, after I fade up, then it leaves a little, you can see one black, uh, outline of the final color of the texture that it's fading towards as uh, a mouthful. So here, um, Taking the particle system. So one of the things you can really do in the particle system is, you, which is really cool, you can uh, essentially, and I'll okay, click the button here again. So you can see it here. Uh, is it here? Yeah. See, these are the light rays. So again, subtle, right? So I went with something less subtle, so I could make sure they were fading, and then I went with large. So I enable 2D effect because uh, I don't need any 3D on that. Uh, I turn off all the other objects, um, and then the color over life. In this case, this is the fade up. So I really wanted them to fade in. Um, so then uh, you fade all the way up to 255 alpha. So that's fully opaque. Uh, and then I had a version with fade down um, as well, but I felt uh, I'd rather them be a little more dynamic the way they come up. And there you start um, fully opaque and then a fade down is to zero. Um, okay, so um, everything else is the same there. On the emitter side, local space um, being set there. Max particles, I just need one in this case. Shape is fine. Emission is burst, I only need it to be once. It doesn't need to necessarily be constant in this case. And then you wanna make sure you turn off all of your um, emission velocity. You don't, want, you don't want these things to move around. They could, you know, depending on what you wanna do, right? But in my case, I just want them to be subtle. I don't want them flying around, so. And then in the particle system, you, um, so I have the level two rays texture. So let me take a look here. Um, uh, I'll, sh I'll show you guys that in a second. So um, basically uh, you set the, the texture in this case. So we, we did the art for that. Um, uh, let me just do it. Let me do it. Let me do it. Hang on. Wait. And uh, do, 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 do. All right, so and particles. Ah, okay, cool. So I also found that there's um, I, we made two versions. One we just made a this is a, this is very expensive because it's a, a lot of alpha overdraw um inside one large image, but you can see here this is where we started base image wise. Um, add a layer real quick so you guys can see that pop, and then uh, make it black, and then floop. There you go. So you can see the basically the um the light ray texture, right? So. Just paint those, paint those on, which is super cool. Um, I wound up, so this, this version was 1920 by 1080, huge, very expensive again. So uh, I scaled it down to about half. So because, uh, because it's soft and fuzzy anyways, it doesn't matter if it's a little bit pixelated um, in terms of scaling artifacts, as long as you can't really see the jaggies. And again, it's a subtle effect, right? So now you guys know what that looks like. Um, plop. So back over into here. All right, so um, so yeah, so that's the texture. Um, it doesn't need to animate. It could animate if I wanted to. I tried to get the light beam, light rays to animate. It's just too expensive in terms of how big the texture sheet <laughs> needs to get at that scale. But I did work on a whole path for that um, and abandoned that approach. And then um, you can set your geometry. In this case, it was just center is fine. Sprite orientation is fine. I set the life min and max because of the, the speed in which I go through the level. Um, I wanted to make sure it's not popping away um, because they fade up and then they disappear when they're done. And I didn't want those to pop away because then your eye would see those. Uh, and then size, I, I crank the scale. It's always better in the particle system to crank the size of your, uh, your image. Um, and so you can see it here. So yeah, and then, uh, so we went through all those bits and then all I did, as you can see, so these ones turn on and then let me take a look. Do, 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 do. All right, so, and then I went through the world and you can see basically these objects. So I basically created, um, let me see, probably the other thing's important. So <clears throat> I wanted the, the light rays to be visible when they come in through the world, right? I didn't want them to pop on as well. Um, so you can see here, so these are here, don't worry about those ones. 
but uh, but yeah, so then they actually turn on before the camera comes into the, the space. And then you can see as we're, we're progressing through the world there, I'm getting exploded. And then they should last. Yeah, so then they uh, they subtly fade out because yeah, I wanted to go. To the, I wanted to fade out and as opposed to fade in. Um, and so you can see here we're about to hit another. Is it another one there? It doesn't matter. So so anyways, as the war, the player progresses through the world, I have basically set these up at certain points. So I'm still working through it, but I like the subtle effect that it gives. Um, Dimitri, I wanted to do this video for you as well, and it turned out to be like a little like, hey, how did we do that uh, tips and trick video? So I'll, I'll put that in there uh, for Shmup Creator. Um, so quick shout outs. So again, let's take a look at the final result. We got light rays. We got 100 light rays. Uh, yeah, so big shout outs. Thank you, Dimitri. Thank you to the community. Thanks to all my friends and family for playing. It's, uh, it's really wonderful to have uh, the support. Some people are saying some amazing and wonderful things about the game. This rock is getting ready to go. We've got a new design coming up. Um, it'll still be dangerous, but it'll look way more dangerous. But this, um, this is pretty much also, um, this is the final, I think we're pretty much at the final stage of uh, level art for the Srebus Island Forest. Um, yeah, so it was nice to get these little kind of subtle effects in there um, and get the final level art. Um, we did this little path on the bottom here, which is pretty cool. It kind of breaks up the uh, the eye, and uh, or breaks up what the eye sees, of course. Again, I'm, a, I'm a gesticulating and whatnot. Um, yeah, okay. So, again, anyone, everyone, uh, thank you very much. Thank you for just... Um, <clears throat> in all seriousness, it really means the world to have people playing the game and responding to the game and getting their ass kicked by the game and giving feedback. Um, we're at about 40 minutes of gameplay and I'm starting to, to get nervous about the amount of, of time people will want to spend with the game. So it's been really cool to see like some people have been playing and they're like, Hey, I want more, which is, you know, you don't, you won't really know how fun something is until you see people play with it. Right. So, and you know, I always say this, but the first time someone plays is the most valuable time because they are they are starting to, to decrypt your design puzzle, right? And, um, you know, after that, they have expectations. And those expectations, generally, if they're enjoying it enough to come back and play the game a second time, those expectations um, are then tempered because they're already starting to get better. Oh, Scoopy Boops! Uh, so they're starting to get better at, um, you know, at the game. So, all right, I digress. Thank you, everybody. I will talk to you soon. Comments, questions, if you want to see other tutorials or how-tos, let me know, and um, we'll talk to you soon.